Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again with another one of my machine shop tips and this video is devoted to talking about and hopefully demonstrating Walton tap extractors. Now the purpose of Walton tap extractors is to remove broken taps out of a hole and this uh, assorted set, it's not really a set of uh, tap extractors, was sent to me uh, by Tim Stevens from Cuba Cuba, New York, that is. Well, thank you, Tim, for these. And I believe he got them at a garage sale, but the thing is, there isn't even one in here that isn't uh, mutilated, mangled, and damaged. And that's what my experience has been with Walton Tap Extractors, and I do not want to uh, disparage the company in any way. It's a quality product, and they're very expensive. And uh, I'm going to show you the prices here in a second. But uh, it requires desperate means uh, to remove a broken tap because if a tap broke, uh, it's really seized in there. And I'm going to uh, talk about some of the reasons why taps break here in just a second. But the, here's the principle of a Walton tap extractor, and that is, and this is a larger size here. I think it's easier for you to see uh, what I'm doing that uh, we would have a broken off tap in the holes, something like this, and they always break off flush, don't they? Even if a little bit sticking out, you ever try to put a, a vice grips on there, they just shatter. But the idea here is that you have to use the correct size, and this is a one inch tap and a one inch tap extractor, and the fingers go into the flutes. Now they make these in four flute, three flute, and two flute, and this of course being a four, but the problem is driving it in there or tapping it in is that there are chips uh, blocking the entry. And once you get it in there, if you can get it in and you want to get it in as deep as possible, then you would slide this collar forward like that up against the tap and proceed to turn it with a tap wrench until it comes out. So that's the principles of a tap extractor, but the reality, and especially in the smaller sizes, they twist off. I mean, where's that little one that I wanted to... Okay, here's a one that is typical of what you're going to see. And that's ruined. You can, of course, buy extra fingers, but that doesn't help you in getting that tap out. So somebody got discouraged there, I'm sure. And probably had to throw the work away. This is a page out of the MSC catalog and you can see there's a Walton tap extractors here. They make them for pipe taps too. But if you look down here, let's look at that one incher that I was just using. That's uh, $41 and if you want to buy extra fingers. I, I think a set of four of those is about four bucks, so they're about a, a dollar each. But you can see the prices there are not particularly cheap. They're fifteen dollars even for one for the quarter inch size. Now what I noticed that on the ones that uh, were sent to me, it uh, it gives a dimension on the shank here. Or it tells you what size here it is. It's for five eighths taps but it also says 16 millimeter on there. Now the older ones did not have a millimeter size, so apparently they will fit uh, either one. And this one's in fairly good shape. Let's talk about some of the reasons why a tap breaks and how to avoid breaking taps. Here's why a tap might break. And uh, number one is inexperience. You just don't have the feel for it, what it's going to take to avoid breaking it. Using too large of a tap wrench, your, uh, your hole may be drilled too small. It might be a dull tap. You're tapping a very hard material. Going in crooked. Tapping without oil or fluid. Hitting the bottom of a blind hole. That's a good way to break a tap and uh, tapping with tiny taps, so the real little taps are going to be so fragile. Uh, failure to use a taper tap, going right in with a plug tap or a bottoming tap. Getting in a hurry, that'll break a tap every time. Failure to back it off, to break the chips. 
uh, tapping a hole that is too long and too deep, which might be unnecessary, using cheap or poor quality taps, and having the chips jam. And there's probably many more reasons as well. I'm talking about hand tapping now, not machine tapping. All of the extractors I showed you so far had four uh, fingers on them, but this, these three uh, were out of my own toolbox. They are brand new and never been used, so they're in perfect condition. But there's one for a three flute tap, which you don't see terribly often. And these other two are for uh, two flute taps, which are often uh, machine type taps, uh, such as this, what I call a gun tap. And you can imagine how delicate two of those are, especially in the smaller size, which I just dropped. You can see how small those fingers are and how delicate looking they are. Good luck on using that. Well, here's something I don't do very often. I'm going to attempt to break a tap, and that is a 5 16 coarse tap here. And then remove it, if I can, with this tap extractor. And it's marked 5 16 So, let me find some scrap stock and a big tap wrench, and I'll try to break it off. This is 3 quarter inch square key stock. Not particularly easy to machine, and I drilled a quarter inch hole, but it's a blind hole. It goes about three-fourths of the way through. I'm using a relatively large handle here, larger than you normally would use, because I want the tap to break. I'm uh, wearing a full face shield, because the tap can shatter. And uh, what else am I doing here? Uh, Okay, I started a tap without any fluid or oil, but it was so hard going I thought I was going to break the tap off with, within about two or three uh, threads, so I did put a little bit of the uh, tap magic on there. And now I'll continue and see if I can break it off just by forcing it. You can also break a tap accidentally by pushing down. Now that's another thing that an inexperienced man might do. She broke off. This is untypical in my, take the mask off, in my opinion, that you got something to hang on to. So first let me put a vice grips on there and see what happens. Or I could knock it off with a, um, with a hammer. Maybe I'll attempt to see if I can get the tap extractor in there just the way it is. All right, let's see what happens here. I'm going to attempt to tap it down into the hole. And there doesn't be t appear to be too many chips in there because it went down at least some. And I'll bring the collar down as far as it goes. And I would typically have expected that tap to break off. Now another thing happened when it broke, and although it hurts, that was a good illustration. I told you that a tap shatters. And a a shard hit me right here. Just enough to break the skin, but it must have hit me hard enough to where I feel a bit of a lump there. That's why I was wearing this. This is a much smaller tap wrench, Greenfield. And I will put a little of this on. See if that helps. I'll put the face shield on now. I'm gunny.
doesn't feel like it's yielding. Okay, I'm going to put the muscle on it. It doesn't feel like it's going to turn. Now, if I had a whole box of the fingers, I would crack that off. Although it looks like there's two fingers that are still in there. Now, maybe they'll come out. Yeah, there they are. Okay. That's been my experience with these, but you know, if you're desperate to get a tap out, let me try now, since we have nothing to lose, but of uh, putting a uh, vice grips on there. And I don't have much hope for that either. The vice grips is on, is on, and I felt something crack when I did that, so I think part of a flute broke off. But, it's coming out. But the thing is that uh, that'll almost never happen where where the the tap breaks off above the work, and you can see how far the tap it was in, perhaps three quarters of an inch, but a good part of that was on the tapered teeth, and there were chips in there, but it wasn't totally loaded either. Well, now I have yet another broken Walton tap extractor to put in this box. But let me tell you a little uh, story as I conclude this video. And I might have told the story before, but when I started teaching in 1967 at the high school, going through things in the tool room, there was a metal box. It was a, a set of Walton tap extractors. And I didn't even know what they were at that time. I was 23 years old. I had never seen them. But uh, I went through the box and it, it looked like this. They were smaller sizes, but every one was damaged. And then I never did understand why people didn't throw things away that were damaged. Why did they keep them? But somebody told me recently, like in a school, uh, experienced teachers sometimes hung on to broken tools in case there was an inventory taken at some time and they would be accused of taking this uh, these, these items which in fact were broken. So that's why you'll see cabinets and drawers full of a lot of broken parts, I guess. That's what I was told. I hope you found this little video interesting. Uh, you can leave a comment if you want uh, with your experience with this product. And uh, again, I, I believe that the, of the highest quality materials, it, it's just that we're, we're doing a rather hopeless thing sometimes in attempting to remove broken taps and quite often uh, nowadays there it's done by uh, electrical discharge and other methods like that so again so long for now